Time pops. Yes, I finally got through it all. I'm caught up through season four. Whatever season five there may or may not be, I have not watched. So please don't hold it against me if you know something that I don't know. Um, that's where I'm at. I want to give you my take on it. Uh, it I will tell you this. It cemented my uh, my thought that Taylor Sheridan is by far, if not the best, one of the best creators in Hollywood right now. He knows how to write drama, intrigue, story arcs, villains, um, unlikable heroes. You're cheering against, you're cheering for and against things. I mean, I, there's just so many elements I think that are done well on the show. I get why it's popular and why it's interesting. So I pulled different characters. So I thought that'd be my prompt to try to remember what to talk about or different elements that I like or don't like and kind of give you my thoughts on it. Uh, my hot take is this. While I do love the show, I'm glad I didn't watch it in real time because the story, the seasons don't wrap up in a nice, concise way. The story arcs are not really clean and well done, and it is a little tedious at times because of that. So, for instance, season one ends and you just see John walking. They didn't really finish the season. Season one and season two go together. It's like 20 episodes is really one big season. Season one and season two go together. Season three and season four are even worse because season three ends with this dramatic cliffhanger type stuff. And season four begins on like the exact same day. So while I appreciate what they try to accomplish, and I think so much of it does work, there's also moments I think where it kind of gets away from them a little bit. They're a little spoiled by their own success, maybe. I don't know. Okay. Kevin Costner, obviously, the star of the show, is uh, you know the patriarch of the family, John Dutton. I think he does a fine job with what he has to work with. I think that he does play the voice a little strange at times. Like, I'm not quite sure. I think that he, uh, while he's treated as the protagonist of the show, he's a villain in his own right. Like, the Duttons are willing to, you know, murder, cheat, steal, rob, do whatever they have to do to basically just keep their land. And that doesn't necessarily make them likable characters. And I'm not willing to give John a pass on that. He's not my favorite character by far because of that. I think it's also, it was also a very selfish move that, you know, they basically were offered $500 million to sell and it was all shut down and it was all shut down because I quote made promises. And it wasn't even as though, maybe I mis misunderstood you guys in chat will let me know because I think that that deal would have left them the ranch. It was them selling a large portion of their land and then they can decide how they want to move forward with the rest of the ranch. Now, admittedly the property taxes would go up so much. It'd be difficult for them to keep the ranch. And that's the essence of what they're going for. But it's a very selfish move to tell your kids and the next generation that you allegedly care so much about that you're going to pass up $500 million. That's, I, I don't know. That was a tough sell. Uh, but but it really is about this dichotomy of in one scene, he'll be a hero, step into the line of fire. Um, by the way, lots of spoilers. I'm not avoiding spoilers on a show that's been out this long. But like, for instance, even in season four, where he steps into that diner situation, puts himself in harm's way, is juxtaposed against someone who orders a violent murder over here. Um, Casey Dutton. Casey does. Casey is by far the most likable character on the show, uh, or at least one of the two main likable characters. And Luke Grimes does a great job. It's very um, uh, sort of like, I don't know, he's not real, like, uh, I don't know what to say. Like, he's just not real flamboyant or anything. He's not, he's just not real obnoxious in his portrayal either. It's very subdued and very interesting. Um, the only thing I didn't care for his character was his little story arc kind of goes nowhere in season four. It's like he puts himself through like the Indian sauna treatment to find himself and the wolf and all that. And I'm like, all right, well, this isn't going anywhere that I'm enjoying. And then they kind of leave it with like a fake cliffhanger that I don't care about. He's fine. I like him. He seems as though he's actually one of the few, even though he's willing to do violent things, he's a man of character and good heart more so than even his dad. So he's by far my favorite character. Beth. Beth is 
designed to be a villain. Like she's like the 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 protagonist you love to hate. She's a monster in every way because she's completely damaged from her childhood, and we get like crazy tragic things that were done to Beth and around Beth, and they just keep happening, which keep making her worse. So. I love all of it. I got to be honest. I can only dream that I could write such a tragic character that you love hating, but also are cheering for to survive. Like I want her to find happiness and joy, but I also can see why she's such uh, unpredictable, crazy, fierce and nasty human. Um, so I have all of that. I, I, I do enjoy that element of it. Uh, Jamie West Bentley's character is terrible. I hate Jess. I hate, I hate Jamie. I, there are so many scenes where West Bentley is not allowed to act and he's just standing there stoic. And that's what they're allegedly going for. And the stupidity of this character in season four, after finding out that he was adopted. And I don't feel like any of that was fleshed out. And the fact that he's as far as we can tell as the audience, uh, he confronts John. But he doesn't. Con none of the other siblings kind of know all of this, and I don't know why. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Um, but the fact that he would just take in his criminal biological dad, and we could, I thought I hated that whole story. Like I hated. It. I, I really just don't care about this character. Um, I'm just not feeling it at all. I don't think he really is a good foil against John or the other family members. I don't think he. He literally is just this spineless wonder that is nothing but a plot uh, device for Beth to call names and insult regularly. Okay. Rip Rip is by far my favorite character. Talk about like the, 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 the stereotypical character of the women want to be with him and the men want to be like him kind of cowboy. He's like that. Like, I'm actually shocked that Cole Hauser is actually still on the show and he's not been cast into something bigger. Someone has not tapped into a, a Clint Eastwood, John Wayne scale Western and put him with someone else because he is fantastic. Cole Hauser would only be, um, I would, I would just love to see him in some dramatic, uh, scale up from this i really really he's believable he's interesting he's so pure of heart and also just a violent monster when he needs to be he's almost like a cowboy punisher i i love everything about rip monica is irritating as all get out because her character is like a giant mood swing like she doesn't know what she's doing sometimes she's mature sometimes she's not <coughs> excuse me she's not really portrayed as being a good wife or a good mom. She's just sort of there and exists and kind of fluts around. And um, I will say they both had moments of integrity where both Casey and Monica turned away from the temptation of cheating on the other. And I think that part was very admirable. And I like the fact that they, they try to keep that as they have that for each other, but they're always foreshadowing how they're going to break up. They always foreshadow conflict where, I just I, I I actually thought after she had this um, scene where she was basically a racist thing, she was treated very badly by the crazy white Karen lady that Beth goes in and destroys the store. Right. Because um, she was falsely accused of stealing. I thought that was going to be the linchpin to turn her in to something monstrous that Casey wouldn't like. Like she would lean into being more like Beth because she thought she needed to be resentful and that Casey wouldn't like that. And that would create marital strife. Instead, we ended up down that silly wolf uh, storyline, even though she's pregnant now. Tate's fine. He's a kid. What do you want me to say? I'm not going to pick on some kid actor because some of his lines are kind of stoic and whatever. Kid's fine. It's been a great moment. I, 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 I really think that the best scene of course is when he has to save his mom and he has to shoot the bad guy the problem is they gave him like some weird ptsd from it and it's just and it was very strange ptsd not like stuff you wouldn't take your kid to the counselor to the next day he was like you know sleeping under the bed and like i don't know uh jimmy well jimmy's moving on so jimmy's out of the series obviously uh, jefferson white has been cast in the hellboy movie got a video on that uh jimmy's fine um 
Dopey Jimmy, Dopey Jimmy being the butt of the jokes is fine for a while. It got old. Uh, Jimmy landing women that are way above his weight class is also kind of become silly. Um, but all of it is fine. I've enjoyed Bill, uh, Jimmy and taking us, the audience, into these awkward situations and things that we wouldn't do. I, I actually like Jimmy more than I thought I would in, in hindsight. Yeah, it's fine. Dan was all right. Dan was a fine villain for what he was. Um, in some ways, the scenes where he was like learning to shoot and like the fish out of water stuff, I think was probably the best portrayal of Dan because it was more like the Californian that's in Montana that wants to be the cowboy. And there was a line about that. Um, yeah, I just kind of wish there was more of that and how that was handled. He was really never menacing. He was just kind of a patsy character. Thomas Rainwater's all right. He just seems like I really just am just sort of over this weird revenge. We're taking back our like, we're owed this land. Like he somehow is this holier than thou representative of how the natives were treated badly. And I don't ever get the sense that he would ever do that as selflessly for the people as he leads on. Like we're supposed to believe he's doing it for the people and whatever. And I'm like, I don't know. You seem like you're doing all right. There's people around you that are pretty poor, so I'm not quite sure I buy it. Uh, so that's really my big hang up with him. I, and I really just don't care too much. Lloyd is the guy you want to like. Um, Lloyd getting the young chick storyline was a little silly for a while. Uh, Lloyd surviving this long. I thought it would be an emotional thing to have Lloyd be one of the characters that didn't make it for, and during some of these conflicts, but that hasn't happened either. Him being a father figure to Jimmy was fine. Um, so Lloyd's okay. Oh, I don't like Linnell. So the Senate, now Senator, but was the governor. Um, yeah, I don't really care too much for her character. I don't even really care for her being the love interest of John, the, basically the friend with benefits stuff. Like, I, I just don't really care about any of that. All right, so that's pretty much everything in that story. Let me think of some other characters or things that I wanted to get up. I, I, I didn't really write down notes for this. Um, this is all, so this is just a lot of, I don't know, me thinking about it. Um, the show really just makes me, this is what Taylor Sheridan has done really well. He just makes me hate everything because you start to feel like politicians in bed with landowners in in bed with the police in bed with it. So all of that element of the corruption and whatever just makes me not like anything. Right. So I'm supposed to like, I don't know why I would want the governor to be in bed with the landowner who's getting his son to be in charge of this. And they're like these, License to carry a gun and kill people, force. It's all of that. I just, there's so much of that. I will say the little subplot in season four with the little environmentalist, uh, scissoring hen girl. Um, I liked her and, and what she brought to the equation because it really kind of like was mocking, like a backhanded mock of those leftist environmentalist tropes. I enjoyed all that because I thought it was pretty good. Uh, let me see. The the worst thing I don't like about the show is that fact that there's so many murders and deaths. It's like they, they just, the solution to the show is just we throw them off this cliff. It, it just it's gotten old. Like there was even allusions to this with the journalists that they killed, because there was comments about like so many deaths within this certain radius points to a problem, but then there's like nothing ever came of it. The feds never come of it. It's the same thing with like the the revolving door of. Um, the financial part, right? So we had Josh Holloway's character, and of course, Rip throws that throws a uh, rattlesnake on his face, and then of course you have um, basically like the angry old lady who looks like the chain smoker from Beetlejuice comes in to boss Beth around. They're kind of trapped in their own little motifs and their own little uh, like cliches in some ways, right? The fact that John's going to be elevated to governor was just dumb. The fact that. Uh, it's just like this is revolving door of, oh, now Jamie will be in charge of this. And now Casey will be involved. Like, it's just some of that is just too, too contrived and, and, and much for me. Um, 
but there are tons of sweet moments. There's tons of great performances and things that I do like. Um, I get why the show is great. I'm just not willing to put it maybe on the pedestal that everybody else does. So that's my take. You guys can blow it up and hate on me. I can't wait to hear from you. I am Pops. Thank you for watching. My favorite quality about Pops is that he's incredibly honest. At least you always know where you stand with Pops. So I like that about him. He's not passive aggressive. He's not sneaky that way. He'll give it to you straight down, straight down both barrels.